Alright guys, I want to go down through uh, this kind of a follow-up to my last PowerPoint. Uh, how well gun control really works. Real data, I don't want to get into the politics, although I will a little bit, and just the facts. Uh, again, this data is pulled from different sources, and I'm not going to get, I mean, you can go find it with Google all you want. That's all I did was Google statistics. Uh, but uh, here's what they want. Gun control advocates would have us believe that honestly, and honestly, and their only leg to stand on is in an effort to take away your Second Amendment's rights, is that you'll be safer if they outlaw guns. Well, let's analyze that just a little bit. Who already has no guns in their country? Uh, the United Kingdom and Australia, for instance. The United Kingdom banned handguns in 1996, and the four years after that, that gun ban, crime rose, violent crime rose, by over 40%. Uh, that same year, 1996, Australia banned most guns and made it a crime to use a gun for self-defense. Armed robberies went up by 51%, assaults 24%, and kidnapping, which is a very lucrative business, went up 43%. Uh, manslaughter with a gun, it went up 16%. Well, it went up, not down. How could that possibly be? Well, here's how that can possibly be. Think about it this way. Drugs are against the law here in the United States. They're 100% illegal to have, sell, or consume. There are penalties for all three of these that include both fines and jail time. Okay. Is there any shortage of the drugs here in the United States? No. You can go to any street corner in just about any city or town and find it. Does the fact that it's against the law stop people from having, selling, or using drugs? If you answered yes to that, please stop the video. You're an idiot, and there's nothing I can do to help you. You're obviously living a bubble, and I don't want to be the person to bust that for you. So, I mean, if you think that the laws against drugs stop drug use, just shut the video off and go somewhere else. Go find a liberal website. Uh, so what do drugs have to do with guns? Well nothing and then everything they are not even at all related but they're also very closely related and let me explain even though drugs are illegal there's no shortage of them the people that have them are criminals by definition and simply don't care that it's against the law to use them nobody ever got caught with two grams of ice and went I, I can't have this really I thought it was perfectly okay. Seriously. Seriously. There's nobody using methamphetamine that doesn't know that they're illegal. But they do them anyway. So does it, how does that affect a gun ban? We will be safer with no guns. That's what they tell us, right? Let's look at some other countries that have banned guns to make people safer. Russia banned guns in 1929, Guatemala 1964, Uganda in the 70s, Cambodia in, the in 1956. Russia has 13 homicides per 100,000 people right now. Guatemala 41 percent or 41 per 100,000 people. Uh, the anti-homosexual bill in 2009, no freedom of press. There's no stats on homicides in Uganda. Cambodia, 11.6 per 100,000 people. Okay, so it's not actually all that bad. The U.S. current rate, 4.8 per 100,000 people. Well below any of those stats. Well below. Now let's look at somewhere a little bit closer. Chicago. Uh... Other than the pizza, there's no reason to go there. City of Chicago has some of the most restrictive gun control laws in the nation, and up until a few months ago, it was illegal for a private citizen to even own or possess a handgun anywhere in the city, including one's own home. Chicago also holds another distinction. More Chicago police officers were killed by gunfire fire in 2010 than any other police agency in the nation. Uh, some of this I copy and put 
pasted and plagiarized from different articles because I didn't type all this in and I don't claim that I did. Uh, if you Google it and find that exact phrase somewhere else, yeah, I copied it. And I'm not claiming I didn't. I'm just trying to get the facts here together. But yeah, more police, Chicago police officers were killed by gunfire in 2010 than any other police agency in the nation. But they don't have guns. The city also boasts one of the highest violent crime rates in the country with one per every 89 residents being a victim of violent crime in the last year. But guns are banned there. How can that be? Gun bans don't stop crime. They create it. And I'll prove this to you later on in the video. I've got some great, great great stuff in this video. Uh, research conducted by Professor James Wright and Peter Rossi for a landmark study funded by the U.S. Department of Justice points out that armed citizens as possibly the most effective deterrent to crime in the nation. Wright and Rossi questioned over 1,800 felons serving time in prisons across the nation. They questioned the bad guys, the people that are coming to get you. And here's what they found. 81% of those people agreed that smart criminals will find out if a potential victim is armed. They will try to. 74% felt that burglars avoided occupied dwellings for fear of being shot. 40% did not commit a specific crime for fear that the victim was armed. It means it's a crime that was prevented. Crime that didn't happen because they thought, well, man, maybe that guy's got a gun. 34% of handgun predators were scared off or shot by armed victims. 57% felt that typical crime feared of being shot by a citizen more than he feared being shot for, by police. Uh, I'm sorry, 57% felt that the typical criminal feared more by being shot by citizens more than they feared being shot by police. There's some data, guys. There's some facts. Those are people that actually commit the crimes answering them questions. It's not a demographic of somebody that wants gun control. It's not a demographic of somebody that doesn't want gun control. It is the people out there taking your stuff and trying to take your life and trying to steal from you and trying to kill you. That's how they feel about gun control. Professor Clink estimates that 1,500 to 2,800 felons are illegally killed in ex excusable self-defense or justifiable shootings by civilians. Another 8,000 to 16,000 criminals are won wounded. This compares to just 300 to 600 justifiable, hom justifiable homicides by cops. Yet, in most instan instances, civilians use a firearm to threaten, apprehend, or shoot at a criminal or to fire a warning shot without injuring anybody. Well, you know what? Say whatever you want, those 1,500 to 2,800 felons that are legally killed, they're never committing another crime. The other 8,000 to 16,000, they're going to think twice. Based on his extensive independent sur survey research, Clink estimates that each year Americans use a gun for protection from criminals more than 2.5 million times annually. The U.S. Department of Justice Victimization Survey shows that protective use of a gun lessens the chance of robberies, robberies rapes, and assaults <coughs> Excuse me, and will be successfully completed while also reducing the likelihood of victim injury. Clearly, criminals fear armed citizens. Well, we at least need that cooling off period back because that prevents crimes of passion. The waiting period or cooling off period, as some in the gun control community like to call it, is the most often cited solution to crimes of passion. However, state crimes records show that in 1992, states having a waiting period and other laws delaying or denying gun purchases had an overall violent crime rate more than 47% higher than the homicide rate of the states that didn't. Okay, think about that. They had their cooling off period, but their crime was higher. That doesn't make sense. If I am in a crime of passion mo mo uh, mode, 
and I'm going to kill somebody because I'm angry, if I can't find a gun, I'll beat them to death with a baseball bat, chop their heads off with a broadsword, whatever I've got to do. Guns don't. I, I've heard this a couple times. Guns cause crimes like forks cause fat people. Guns are a tool. Just like a hammer, a saw, or a car. Circumstances which might suggest crimes of passion or spontaneous arguments such as a lover's triangle arguments over money or property or alcohol-related brawls comprise 29% of the criminal homicides according to FBI data, not the majority of them by any standards. But we know guns don't stop crime. When concealed carry laws were passed and put into practice, the result was completely different than hysterical claims of the gun prohibitists. In Florida, since the concealed carry law was changed in 1987, the homicide rate has dropped 21 percent, while the national rate has risen 12 percent across the nation. States with favorable concealed carry laws have 33 percent lower homicide rate overall and 37 percent lower robbery rate. Now, this data right here, based on some of my data later, is skewed. And here's why I think why. I believe what they are talking about is they are talking about on a state by state basis, not the na in the national average. Uh, kind of figuring out some of this data is tough. Um, so later there's going to be some more facts with some graphs and stuff. So hold your opinions. I want you to draw it. That's the thing about all this. I want you to draw your own honest opinion of why things happen. I'm tired of hearing people just go, well, the you know, the communist crowd going, we need to take your guns, you'll be safer. And then the pro-gun crowds, we need more guns, you'll be safer. I want you to draw your own conclusions. I put the facts in here, even the damaging facts to the gun movement, or the pro-gun movement. The damaging facts are in here too, make no mistake. You'll see them here in a little bit. I'm trying to give, let you make your own honest, informed decision of what fuels crime and violent crime and murder in this country. So, you know, stick with us. But if we ban them, no one can get guns. Criminals in Washington have no problem getting their prohibited drugs or prohibited handguns. The result is a skyrocketing of the city's murder rate. In 1991, the D.C. homicide rate was 80.6 per 100,000 people was the highest ever recorded in America by a big city and marked a 200% rise in homicides since banning handguns. Rise, not decline. In that same time period, the nation's homicide rate rose just 11%. Since 1991, the homicide rate has remained nearly 75 people for every 100,000 in Washington, D.C., while the national rate sits around 9 or 10 people per 100,000. Man, gun control works. There is no model of gun control that has worked. Time and time again, countries who have completely banned guns have done nothing but disarm law-abiding citizens. Think about it. Criminals who are going to rob and kill you, do you really, really think he is going to say, Wait a second, it's against the law for me to have this illegal gun. I guess I'll just go put it down and go get a knife. <laughs> are you kidding me? In all, not most, all countries that have banned guns to reduce crime, it has failed miserably. Not most of them, all of them. In the cases here in the United States where we have gun control, those cities to tend to have a higher, not lower, violent crime rate involving guns. Now, let me tell you again, I got that phrase from a, a pro-gun website, and I'm going to prove to you here later that that phrase is actually inaccurate. Like I said, I'm giving you the good with the bad. I want you to make your own decision. That phrase right there, in all cases here in the U.S. where we have gun control, those cities tend to have a higher, not lower, violent crime rate, is wrong. And because I pulled that from a pro-gun website, I left it in because I wanted to notate that. I want people to understand I am giving you the facts, not my opinion. There are, although, in fact, a few leaders that have banned guns. The most foolish mistake we could possibly make would be to allow our subject races to possess arms. History shows us uh, 
conquerors who have allowed their subjects races to carry arms have prepared their own downfall by doing so. Indeed, I would go so far as to say they supply the supply of arms to the underdogs is a sign quo na I don't I don't get that for the overthrow of any sovereignty. So let not have any nation, militia, or native police. German troops alone will bear the sole responsibility for the maintenance of law and order throughout the occupied Russian territories. And a system of military strong points must evolve to cover the entire occupied country. Adolf Hitler said that while he was at dinner in April of 1942. Uh, Nazi Germany established gun control in 1938, and from 1939 to 1945, 13 million Jews and others who were unable to defend themselves were rounded up and exterminated. If the opposition disarms, well and good. If it refuses to disarm, we shall disarm it ourselves. Joseph Stalin said that. In 1929, the Soviet Union established gun control. From 1929 to 1953, about 20 million dissidents, unable to defend themselves, were rounded up and exterminated. By 1987, that figure had risen to 61,911,000. Gun control works. Damn right. The measure adopted to restore republic order are, first of all, the elimination of the so-called subserve elements. They were eliminated of disorder of sub, sub, uh, subregion, that word. <laughs> One of the more of each conflict they gave the categorical, categorical order to confiscate the largest possible number of weapons of every sort and kind. This is a classification which continues with the utmost urgency, has given satisfactory results. Mussolini said that all political power comes from the barrel of a gun. The Communist Party must command all the guns. That way, no guns can ever be used to command the party. And I'm not sure how to pronounce, pronounce his name. Mao Ting Tong. China established gun control in 1935. From 1948 to 1952, 10 million people, political dissidents, unable to defend themselves, were rounded up and exterminated in China. By 1987, 35,236,000 exterminated. I did not join the resistance movement to kill people, to kill the nation. Look at me now. Am I a savage person? My consequences are clear, or my conscience is clear. Pelo Pot. Cambodia established gun control in 1956 between 1975 and that's actually supposed to say 1979. Uh, Two million, thirty-five thousand educated people unable to defend themselves were rounded up and exterminated. During the short four years of his rule in Cambodia, Plo Pot or whatever his name, rogue government murdered 31 percent of the entire population of Cambodia. Sorry for the typo. George Washington said a free people ought to be armed. No free man shall ever be debarred the use of arms. The strongest reason for the people to retain the right to keep and bear arms is as a last resort to protect, them since, protect themselves against tyranny in government. Thomas Jefferson. Guard with jealous attention to public liberty. Suspect everyone who approaches that jewel. Unfortunately, nothing will preserve it but downright force. Whenever you give up that force, you are ruined. The great objective is that every man be armed. Everyone who is able might have a gun. Patrick Henry. Arms and hands of citizens may be used at individual's discretion and private self-defense. John Adams. To disarm the people is the most effective way to enslave them. George Manson, or Mason. Americans have the right and the advantage of being armed, unlike the people of other countries whose leaders are afraid to trust them with arms. James Madison. 
If someone has a gun and is trying to kill you, it would be reasonable to shoot back with your own gun. Well, who the hell would have said something like that? The Dalai Lama. Among many of the misdeeds in the British rule in India, history will look upon the act of depriving the whole nation of arms as the blackest. If we want the Arms Act to be repealed, if we want to learn the use of arms, here is a golden opportunity. In the middle of a class, render voluntary help to government. In the hour of its trial, distrust will disappear and the ban possessing arms will be withdrawn. Gandhi To preserve liberty, it is essential that the whole body of the people always possess arms and be taught alike, especially when young, how to use them. Richard Henry Lee, Virginia, Gal Virginia Delegate to the Continental Congress, initiator of the Declaration of Independence and, and member of the First Senate, which passed the Bill of Rights. Guns equals tyranny equals enslavement, or I'm sorry, gun control equals tyranny equals enslavement. As we've seen, people kill people by taking their guns away first. Dictators, rulers, kill people by taking their guns away. These people. These are the people that have slaughtered or want to. Wait a minute. Diane Feinstein and Princess Pelosi? Maybe that's change you can believe in. Now, America was founded on the principle that well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Back when this country was founded, and some of the greatest, how should we say, peace advocates in the world were pro-gun. Second Amendment, like I said, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of the free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. infringed. The founders of this great country found it necessary to put the right to keep and bear arms second only to the right of freedom of speech and religion. So my question is this, if we let the government keep, take away the right to keep and bear arms, what is to stop them from taking away the rights of the First Amendment next? Why can't some people understand that the Second Amendment was put there to protect all the other ones, including the First, from the tyr tyranny of evil men? Alright, let's look at some dangerous cities. According to U.S. News and World Report, this is 2003 to 2009 data. Tied for number 10, Cleveland. Guns and concealed carry are allowed here. Even though it's tied for 10th on the list and guns and CCW are illegal in Ohio, I would like to point out that CCW in Ohio was signed into law making it legal to conceal carry a weapon in April of 2004. Between 2006 and 2010, the actual number of homicides has dropped by 40%. The number of motor vehicle thefts have dropped by 46%. Minneapolis, allow guns there too. They have a CCW law. Tied for number 10 spot, Minnesota is new to concealed carry alumni. Violent crimes, most notably homicides, have plump been plummeting in Minneapolis during the past two years. According to statistics released today by the city's police department, between January 1st and April 22nd, only three homicides had occurred in the city compared to 11 during that same period in 2008. Apparently this uh, cut and paste came from 2009. In 18 a year earlier, so far from cry from city 1995 when a record 90, 97 homicides saddled the city. Nationally infaming with journalists dubbed dubbed it Murderopolis. Overall violent crime has dropped 25 percent by the date of this article, not this video, the article I copied this from. Their CCW law was barely a year old at the time. 25 percent in nearly a year, that's not too bad. Uh, 
I, I want you to start remembering the year 1995. 1995 when it re hit a record 97 homicides. You need to pay attention to that mid 90s that's going to come into play later. Let's breeze through these cities. Kansas City, Missouri. Guns and CCWs are allowed there. Number nine most violent city in the country. Joining the CCW club in 2003, since then enjoying a 28% reduction in violent crime. Again, data from 2009. Baltimore, Maryland. Maryland is a May issue concealed carry state. Many are not issued unless you know someone or have a valid reason. Uh, it's considered one of the, yeah, they may issue and they probably won't states. Maryland's largest city has a violent crime rate 60%, 68% higher than the national average. Let's go on to Miami. Guns and CCW are allowed there. The highest violent crime rate in Miami is attributed to a large number of other of illegal aliens and the fact that the city is the gateway for illegal drug trade here in the U.S. Uh, from Mexico. According to the DEA, over half the drugs entering the U.S. from Mexico come through Miami. So. That's kind of a reason for that, you know, the illegal alien problem and the drug problem put Miami on the list. Memphis. Guns and CCWs are allowed in Memphis. Number six. I couldn't understand why the crime rate was so high here and then I, and they have CCW. After looking into it, I decided not to post my findings as I'm not interested in starting a fight with any, on, with anyone on anything other than gun control. Google why is crime so high in Memphis and draw your own conclusions based on the demographics of the city and that's all I'm going to say about it. Detroit, guns and CCW are allowed here. Joined the shall issue states in 2001. Before that they were a May issue state. Crime in the city of Detroit has dropped 23 percent from 2000 to 2004. As the bottom fell out of the auto industry and the economy emission has become arguably one of the worst in the country, the crime rate has started back up in 2008. Now, what else happened in 2008? That, yeah, there was something important happened in 2008. I don't remember what it was. Birmingham, Alabama. Guns and CCW are on a May issue classification. According to what I'm reading, are hard to get in certain areas of Alabama. It's based on your address. So, Again, not get into a fight about anything other than gun control. Hit the U.S. Census, look at the demographics of the city, draw your own conclusions. Orlando, in a tie with Birmingham for number three. Again, guns and CCW are allowed here. Yeah, same thing. Call it what you want, but if it looks like a duck and walks like a duck, it's usually a duck. Another factor being the staggering number of illegal aliens in the city. Coupled with William, one of the largest tourism hotspots in the country because of Disney, making preying on tur tourists that tend to carry a lot of cash a job for a lot of people. The city is doomed to always have a high crime rate. But again, look at the demographics. Atlanta. Yes, CCW and guns are allowed here. Like I said, I'm not going to pull the good facts out of this. I'm not. Or the bad facts for gun control advocates. Lot, most all of these cities have gun control or no gun control and, and available CCWs and I'm pointing that out. Atlanta. CCWs allowed here. Atlanta hits number two on the list however violent crimes is not really that bad and I don't have the numbers here in front of me. However they have a ridiculously high amount of property crime. Uh, again look at demographics. Now number one on the list. St. Louis and yes, you can have a concealed carry permit in St. Louis. Joining the CCW club in two, just 2003, since then enjoying a 30% reduction in violent crime as of the date of the data, which was 2009. So in six years, their violent crime dropped 30%, guys. 30% in six years. Not bad. But wait! That shows that cities animations didn't work. <laughs> that shows that cities that allow guns are all over the top ten or all over the top ten most dangerous cities. Yes it does. Again there are other reasons for crimes other than guns. Now let's look at the top 25 from 2011. Some of them. And I'm gonna I'm not gonna tell you or not argue or refuse to tell you. I took these set 
as the anti-gun places. New Jersey, California, Massachusetts, Illinois, D.C., Connecticut, more Massachusetts, Buffalo, New York, may issue, no issue, may issue, no issue, no issue. California, and I call California no issue state. I know they say they're a may issue, but I know people there and they're a no issue state. It takes an act of God to get a concealed carry permit in California. But that's still only about half of the top 25. 13, I think. 13, it's only half. But that's looking at it on a city by city basis. Stay with me. I'll explain this all in a minute. Give me a chance to make some points. First, there are a lot of factors in what makes an area violent. You can cry all you want, facts are facts. I'm not going to get into it here. You can Google the Demerat graphics of each of these cities, these high crime rate cities, and draw your own conclusion. Facts are facts. Just because you don't like them, don't start calling me a racist. Now, there are just a few more things we need to look at to see the entire picture, so don't drop off this video yet. Just a couple more pages in the book of violence in America. And yeah, I know that doesn't support my theory, but wait, I'll prove it to you in a minute. Alright, this is concealed carry over the history, over the last 25 years here in America. As the states get blue, those are states that enacted concealed carry laws. The yellow states were May issue. The red states are no issue. And the green states are unrestricted, meaning they don't care what you do. We'll let you look at that again, and we're going to see this here again later as it comes into play. But look, in the mid-90s, as the states start to turn blue, that's the important fact here. The mid-90s. By 2011, and a lot of that being part of the 2007 decision of D.C. versus Heller. Now, so a lot more states have CCWs than they didn't 25 years ago. So, all right. Took this from a left-wing website. Love it. All right. Now, bottom orange line is violent crime. The blue line is property crime. And the gray line is population and millions increase. So what we see here is roughly between 1960 and 1970, crime started to drastically increase. But then there's a pretty drastic decrease in the mid-90s. Hmm, what happened in the mid-90s? Well, let's look. Murder rates, the high, 1991, 24,700 murders. And this is nationwide now, nationwide. The low being in 1962, 8,530. In 2010, probably 60% drop from the high. Rape, 1992, the high, 109,000. The lows were in 1960, 17,000. Down to 84,000 in 2010. Significant drop. Again, the high, mid 90s. Assault, over a million in 1993, mid 90s. The low being 104,000, or 154,000 in uh, the early 60s, 1960. The 2010 rate, 700,000 and change. Pretty good drop. But let's look at the murder rate in the U.S. because usually guns, it's the guns killing people, not the people that actually kill the people. This is the murder rate, again, from the left's website. Wow, sharp increase there in the mid-60s. Just up and up and up and up. Kind of leveled out, up and down, up and down, till the mid-90s. Hmm. Now we're almost again to a 
all-time low. And I'd like to point out the population base in the United States has done nothing but increase over those time periods. So now we know the highs and lows. Okay, so what? Gun control in the U.S. is thought to have really started shortly after November 22, 1903, when evidence of the assassination of the President John F. Kennedy increased public awareness to the relative lack of control over the sale and possession of firearms in America. However, the first law was in 1968. The Gun Control Act of 1968 was enacted for the purpose of keeping firearms out of the hands of those not legally entitled to possess them because of age, criminal background, or incompetence. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. The act regulates imported guns, expands the gun dealer licensing and record keeping requirements, and places specific limitations on the sale of handguns. This list list of persons banned from buying guns expanded to include persons convicted of any non-business related felony, persons found to be mentally incompetent, or users of illegal drugs. All good things. I, I don't want felons, and I don't want people that are nuts, and I don't want users of illegal drugs to have guns. I don't. So in the mid-60s, though, we got gun control to protect us. Great! Not so much. Let's go back and look at that FBI graph. In the mid-60s, murders skyrocketed from the left's own website. Right when we get gun control, murders go through the roof. That doesn't mean anything. Crime is coming down. No thanks to gun control. Is it? Let's go back and look at another picture from our data of violent crime tens that took a turn from the time of their heights in the early 90s. For instance, murders high for the country was in 1991. Let's go back to our video here. Why it started in the middle, I don't know. But let's start at the beginning. 86, 87, 88. There's the mid-90s. Wow. The state starts to turn blue at a rapid rate as violent crime and murder drops at an astounding rate here in this country. But, 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 wait a minute. Gun control works. Really? Because back in 1986, there were a whole lot of people that didn't have guns. When violent crime was on the rise drastically. So when gun control was enacted in the early 60s, crime and murder went way up. Argue all you want, but the more and more the U.S. has turned blue and started issuing concealed carry permits, violent crime went down, way down even as population soared. Violent sized city can be attributed to a large part into its population demographics. Call me a racist all you want. The facts don't lie, and the facts don't care about your skin color or immigration status. They're simply the facts. So, like I said, go Google it. Draw your own conclusions about the demographics. Don't cry to me because of what they are. I didn't make them. I'm just telling you what they are. So what have we learned? Gun control started the violence in America. It didn't stop it. We have more CCWs. The more CCWs we have, the lower crime rates get, not higher. Illegal, illegal immigrants are a major cause of violent crime for a number of reasons. Drugs, whatever. Not going to get into that. But there's no argument that illegal immigrants are a huge factor. And then now, Barack Hussein Obama wants to make it okay for illegals to just stay in this country without going through the system that we have for becoming a legal U.S. citizen. It's there. Anybody can do it. He wants to give them a free pass. Princess Pelosi and Nancy Feinstein want to bring gun control back even though crime is dropping. So they liked it when we were dying? Well, just remember one thing, would you? Criminals prefer unarmed victims. Dictators prefer unarmed peasants. And that says it all. 
please contact an approved concealed carry instructor in your state. Take some firearms training and become safe and proficient with a sidearm. Do this and take yourself off the victim list. And come November, help us take us take all of us off the peasant list. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.